Raksol in North Bihar, a sleepy town on the Indo-Nepal border. The restrictions seen on most border areas are rarely witnessed here. Unhindered passage, no checks, no passport or any travel documents required. One has to spend as little as rupees 35 to reach Birganj in Nepal from Raksol in Bihar, a mere four kilometer distance. क्या है बॉर्डर है हाँ नेपाल का सीमा बॉर्डर है सीमा बॉर्डर है आप नेपाली नागरिक हैं हाँ नेपाली नागरिक तो बड़ा आराम से आ जा रहे हैं इसमें हाँ तो ये भी खुला सीमा ना है ना हम्म ये आदमी सब आता है जाता है तो यहाँ से तातंकवादी लोग आराम से आ जा सकता है हाँ सर हाँ सर हाँ क्या होता है आपको कुछ पता है आप तो फौज क्या हैं आप हम पुलिस अधिकृत हैं पहले साइट हैं नेपाल में हाँ नेपाल में तब अब रिटायर हो गए रिटायर हो गए घर ह� तो यहाँ से आप आराम से साइकिल से आ गए हाँ आ गए और लोग और लोग भी आता जाता हाँ, होगा हाँ सर सब सब कोई एकदम बढ़िया से आराम से आते हैं और जाते हैं इट इज पॉसिबली दिस फ्री वे दैट इज बीइंग एक्सप्लोइटेड बाय टेररिस्ट टू गो अबाउट बिजनेस एंड इट वाज दिस एक्सेस दैट मेड दिस रीजन अ हेवन फॉर वन ऑफ इंडिया मोस्ट वॉन्टेड टेररिस्ट यासिन भटकल I am here at Raksol, near the porous Indo-Nepal border. It is here that Bhatkal was officially sworn as arrested from. This porous Indo-Nepal border for long has been the favoured transit point for most of the anti-India terror activities. Twenty-eight August, ATM. Yasin Bhatkal and his aide Asadullah were meeting in Raksol for planning terror activities. The Bihar police had received earlier intelligence and cops were rushed to Raksol. The NIA already had a non-bailable warrant against the two and left for the spot. ISI man and Pakistan-backed terrorist Yasin Bhatkal was arrested near Nahar Chowk area in Raksol, just a kilometer from the international border of Nepal. Why Yasin Bhatkal chose to be in India despite being on the radar of most investigative agencies, he constantly managed to give the slip to police of various states. Bhatkal is suspected to have engineered various blasts, including those in Hyderabad, Pune, Mumbai, and even the capital of his home state of Karnataka. And now that Yasin Bhatkal has finally been arrested, the bigger challenge for Indian police would be to ensure that they get relevant information out of Yasin Bhatkal. The catch was big. After Tunda and Jundal, India had managed to nab the man behind six blasts. The man responsible for the deaths of 214 innocents. It is an operation that even intelligence bureaus, old timers, describe as a classic human intelligence based search and grab mission. Yasin Bhatkal, whom many describe as the face of modern jihad, is so tech savvy that he was shunning virtually all technology on the run, making it virtually impossible for global intelligence agencies to track and tail him. It was then that IB's deeply embedded human int modules provided some vital inputs to track and arrest Yasin Bhatkal. The thing about Yasin Bhatkal is, you know, as we know that he is uh, the lead, he was the leader of the Indian Mujahideen, at least he, until he had become a very prominent figure within the Indian Mujahideen. So the thing is, you know, he had actually a lot of, you know, control over, you know, modules in 
maybe in Karnataka, in uh, Bihar, and you know those places. And Bihar module, as we have been seeing, you know, has become quite uh, active, proactive, dangerous, also to that extent. You know, in fact, it took over, took over after Azamgarh module. Now, what happens is Yasin Bhatkal was basically a key to the Indian Mujahideen even functioning within India. See, the thing is his proximity with those handlers of his own Pakistan, be it Riaz Bhatkal or Iqbal Bhatkal or Amir Reza Khan, these people, you know, he was actually the link between them. And also a link between, you know, India and the Gulf, where the Indian Mujahideen is concerned. So, in, you know, in such an event, what, what tends to happen is when this person is arrested, there is, you know, loads and loads of information which, you know, investigating agencies can derive, provided they do a thorough investigation. But where did it all begin? How did Ahmad Sidi Bapa become one of India's most dreaded terror masterminds, Yasin Bhatkal? Bhatkal in Karnataka, a small coastal town 500 kilometers northwest of Bangalore. We are right outside the house where Mohammed Ahmad Siddi Bapa was born and lived up until 2007. His family, who still continue to live right here, say that they have not heard from him in the past seven years and still are trying to digest the fact that one of their kin have gone on to get such a notorious reputation. <laughs> It was here that in the year 1983, that Ahmad Sidi Bapa was born. In 2006, the contract was good, it 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 was तकलीफ हो जाए तो एक दो मरता बोला फिर हम तुझसे थोड़ा बात जरा दूर रहा बात करने के गया फिर वो मोमाल में एक आदमी हमको बोला उस दुकान लगाया है स्पोर्ट की कोई दुकान लगाया है हम गया भी नहीं ओपनिंग भी नहीं गया हमको मालूम था इधर दुबई बहुत मुश्किल है पैसे के बाला छा रही है फिर उसके बाद एक महीने के बाद फोन भी हमारा बंद हो गया फिर हम खबर निकाला दुकान बंद हम फौरन पुलिस के पास गया हमारा एक दोस्त पुलिस था बोला ऐसा ऐसा हुआ हमारा बच्चा पहला पूजा कुछ बिजनेस की हां बिजनेस वो बिजनेस का रफड़ा है तो डरने की बात नहीं इधर बोध ही ऐसा केस होता है कुछ चेक वेक करवाएगा वो आ जाएगा फिर एक साल दो साल तक हम समझा आ जाएगा दो साल के बाद फिर मीडिया में उसका नाम आना शुरू हो गया यासीन भटकर यासीन भटकर फोटो उसका पुराना बता था बच्चे उसके बाद हमको कुछ नहीं मालूम क्या हुआ क्या नहीं हम समझा वो कोई मर गया कुछ हो गया बोलते यासीन स्टडी थियर till the 10th standard. After not being able to clear his examination, he left for Dubai in November 2005. Some say Yasin disappeared from Dubai in January 2007. <laughs> So, I think that the people who are in the world are not in the world. They 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 are वो तो किधर जाता ही नहीं था लड़का नमाज जाना घर जाना वही काम था स्कूल छोड़ने के बाद वहीं पर रहता था Few years back he married a girl named Zahida at New Delhi He told her he was Imran from Lucknow Since 2010 Yasin was living in the guise of Dr Sharuk a Yunani doctor at Pokhara in Nepal 18 months after Baklao's encounter, Yasin Bhatkal decided to set up a base in Delhi. This time around, he was operating as Dr. Imran Sidi Bappa. He married a girl and along with his father-in-law, opened a gun factory on the outskirts of Delhi-Haryana border. His father-in-law, Mohammed Irshad, was arrested by the special cell of the Delhi police in 2011. He's still in Tihar jail. Despite repeated attempts, his family refused to speak to us. And even residents of this area 
refused to speak about the most infamous resident. It's an important catch because uh, he's uh, been at the higher levels of uh, the Indian Mujahideen and therefore he would be privy to uh, a lot of information here uh, and also with his uh, Pakistani handlers and so on. So, you know, Karachi project is primarily designed to, what shall I say, uh, incentivize homegrown terrorism because it's, it is important for uh, Pakistan to show that uh, there is terrorism modules which are homegrown mm -hmm. and not everybody is not one who comes from outside India and that is where uh, they were able to uh, tackle, use uh, disgruntled elements uh, within India to uh, carry, out, carry out, out the uh, at, at attacks and uh, the Indian Mujahideen has been uh, in that sense uh, quite successful in uh, their activities. 29 December 2009. The Kolkata police had caught a man named Pulla Malik on the charges of acting as a courier of fake currency notes. He was in jail for the next two months. Barely 10 days before the German bakery blast in Pune, Bulla Malik was released. Kolkata police closed the case. The German bakery CCTV footage came as a shocker. Bulla Malik was Yasin Bhatkal. But it was too late. Bhatkal had hoodwinked the law again. He stayed in Kolkata, procured explosives, and use the city as safe passage like many other terrorists by using the networks of his close associate, one of the founders of Indian Mujahideen, a Kolkata man, Amir Reza Khan. A man of multiple identities, the face of Karachi project. The man with the complete backing of Pakistan's rogue spy agency, the ISI. An Indian waging a war against India. Yasin Bhatkal is now in the NIA net. And his revelations are bound to strengthen India's case to confront Pakistan. Actually, this side of their policy is being handled not by the elected government. It is being handled by the army and the ISI. Always had enough and more proof against Pakistan, but this at the end of it is going to do nothing to them. They are just going to find another replacement for him and they will try to condemn because it's part of their state policy. Thirteenth February two thousand and ten. Seven fifteen in the evening. The German bakery in Pune was buzzing with visitors. Local students, tourists, they were all there. Right then, a bomb went off. 17 people were dead. Over 60 were injured. Authorities over here at German Bakery are taking no chances. In fact, the new owners of the restaurant who have reopened this restaurant after more than three years since the tragedy have heightened security over here significantly. In fact, this is the very ground that caught the first images of Yasin Bhatkal. The CCTV footage of this restaurant was crucial for the investigating agencies in helping them get a clear picture of what the terror mastermind looked like. The young customer who left back a rucksack over here on that fateful day of February 13, 2010 was much more lethal than they had imagined. They are one of the major perpetrators of the blasts here and uh, it is uh, uh, and in inputs which we have from the interrogation reports of many people who have been arrested which says that they are in Karachi, in Pakistan. And uh, my 
my interpretation or my assessment has been that it is not in the hands of the uh, Pakistan government per se. Uh, number one, they do not accept that these people are there. Number two, actually th this uh, side of their policy is being handled not by the elected government. It is being handled by the army and the ISI. And on this, I don't think that the elected government seems to be, uh, show any signs of having any control. If, they, if what they say is true, that they really want good relations with India, uh, they know that they can't get good relations with India if, they, if agencies within their country continue carrying out terror attacks in India. That, uh, that would be a fool, very foolish government indeed, which would... Uh, uh, you know, go, uh, go in for a uh, friendly relations with Pakistan despite that country uh, carrying out terrorist attacks with India. This dastardly attack was just one of the many across Indian cities, all masterminded by the Indian Mujahideen. An organization that was merely a wing of the Pakistani terror group Lashkar e Toiba. And Yasin Bhatkal was the face of this outfit in India. Over the years, the strikes became increasingly similar. Bombs planted on two wheelers, the use of ammonium nitrate, and multiple blasts in a matter of seconds. Asin Bhatkal since uh, 2007, when he started out, uh, you know, he actually, you know what is a very interesting thing, they started off in a place called as Kudre Gundi, which is, you know, in Chikmagalore. All the ammonium nitrate, which was used for all the blasts in the country, was actually transported out of Kudre Gundi by Yasin Bhatkal through another accomplice known as Akbar Ali. Akbar Ali. Now, these people actually, they started this thing. So when Yasin Bhatkal uh, came in uh, to the picture, his main role was, you know, to the, the supply of arms and ammunition and, you know, the preparation of the bomb. He actually went, you know, uh, developed, I mean, in, he started, you know, bettering himself, you know, where the bomb uh, making was concerned. So in, initially what they planned out Indian Mujahideen was an operation known as Operation Bad, that is, you know, Bangalore and the Bad, Delhi. So in that uh, situation, uh, uh, Yasin Bhatkal was still making the bombs, whereas Riaz Bhatkal was still running the show. Support from Pakistan is coming not only in the form of a passport, but Bhatkal says his brother Riaz is still holed up there in Karachi. And while Pakistan might find itself on the back foot, the recent arrests, first Jindal, then Tunda, and now Yasin Bhatkal, is being viewed as a major coup for India's intelligence agencies. But it's early days yet to say that the tide of terror could finally be turning in India's favour. In a span of five years, Indian Mujahideen became a dreaded terror outfit. And as the trail of terror spread across Indian cities, it was the real bosses in Pakistan who were calling the shots. 24 hours since the arrest of India's most wanted man, and he was remorseless. Yasin Bhatkal was spilling the beans in custody. His confessions were bound to startle, and the police was prepared. Bhatkal confessed to visiting Pakistan in 2009, along with Iqbal and his brother Riaz. During his probe, Bhatkal confessed that Iqbal was made the chief of operations of the Indian Mujahideen. Yasin revealed that his brother was currently in Karachi. And then came the most incriminating of them all. Bhatkal confessed he met an ISI colonel who gave instructions for terror attacks in India. One thing is what we can do is uh, continue to build on uh, what we get from him and his association with the ISI or the agencies which are there in Pakistan. 
But, you know, we will continue to do that. It's not like, you know, it's only now. Right from, you know, the parliament attack days to, you know, the Jaisa Mahamad to lashkar e taiba days. We've always had enough and more proof against Pakistan. But this, at the end of it, is going to do nothing to them. They are just going to find another replacement for him. And they will try to condemn because it's part of their state policy. It's not like uh, Yasin Bhatkal says, yes, I was there with the ISI, I was closely associated. Is going to, you know, change anything for them, basically. They will continue to deny it. In fact, you can say that this is a very dangerous period, basically, because you know what? See, they are down. They are down at the moment. And knowing the psyche of the Indian Mujahideen ever since its inception, how they have always behaved. See, they are very defiant, they are very, you know, that challenging in uh, nature. They will try and do something, I mean, maybe big or, you know, maybe just very, very small, symbolic kind of thing. You know, they will try and do something to show that, you know, look, we are down but not out. Okay. So, immediately after his arrest, there was an intelligence circular sent across to all police stations that, you know, in the wake of arrest of Tunda and then, you know, later Asin Bhatkal, they will try and hit back because they have to keep showing that we are not down. <laughs> The Pakistani hands becoming increasingly clear. The proof only more glaring. And the denials are not helping the hostile neighbor's case either. Two big terror catches in less than a fortnight. Abdul Karim Tunda and Yasin Bhatkal. The two men are on India's 15 most wanted list. And they are now facing the law. But the arrest will only hold any significance if the evidence extracted from these dreaded men is used to nail the terror bosses in Pakistan. Two big catches and still counting.